Good morning, Representative Keffer, Chairman Keffer, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Heather Harward, and I'm the Executive Director of the H2O for Texas Coalition. I greatly appreciate the opportunity um, to talk to you today about your interim charge number one and what H2O for Texas is doing with respect to that charge. By way of brief background, the H2O for Texas Coalition is a nonprofit organization that consists of a diverse group of stakeholder partners. We have public partners, private partners, um, water providers, as well as water customers. And what all of our partners share in common is a commitment to the implementation of the Texas State Water Plan. Uh, as most of you all know, I think we were formed in 2010 with a laser-focused mission, which was to secure a dedicated source of revenue for implementation of the State Water Plan. Following the historic passage of HB4 and the approval of, of that initiative by the voters via Proposition 6 in 2013, our organization got together and, and looked at what our mission would be going forward if there even was to be a mission or, or should we dissolve. And it was, um, we reached the agreement within our organization that um, we had a group of folks that had come to the table to talk about water and water policy and the state water plan that had never sat at that table before and that we were on to something special and uh, decided to continue the organization with an expanded role. And that was to look at regulatory and statutory issues related to implementation of the state water plan. So we were still under the same umbrella, um, but we had expanded the net. And that was a huge transition for our organization during the 84th legislature. Um, as opposed to having one really narrow focus, we now had a much broader focus with issues that proved um, to be much more contentious uh, than um, what we saw as when we all held hands together and, and worked to secure passage of HB4. Um, what, we, what we also encountered, in, in addition to, to the growing pains and the evolution of our organization, was a much different landscape in the 84th legislature. Uh, and in, in looking back and reviewing and downloading why that was, following the conclusion of the 84th legislature, um, our, our folks believe that, that that happened for three reasons. And one, um, we were coming off of a historic water session in the 83rd session legislature in 2013. And we have an unfortunate habit in Texas of only taking up major water policy initiatives uh, once a decade. And so the good news was we had um, passed HB4 and SWIFT was underway, but that also proved to be the bad news because um, there, there was some apathy with respect to uh, taking on water policy initiatives that maybe our work was done because we had secured passage of HB4. The second thing that happened um, was we encountered the most historic turnover in the legislature that we'd seen in recent history. Um, much of the historic institutional knowledge related to water policy uh, had either retired or been voted out of office. You're, you're blessed on this committee that you probably have the institutional historic knowledge uh, when it comes to the water plan and Representative King. Um, but that's not necessarily the case throughout the legislature. And then the third piece of what I would call a, a perfect storm, I know L'Oreal talked about a perfect storm earlier, but in this case, uh, the perfect storm involves water, both figuratively and literally. And that was the floods of, over Memorial Day in 2015. And so those three things came together, and our group got together and said, okay, where are we as an organization? Where do we see the legislature and the state with respect to the state water plan? And um, what we determined was that um, the legislature and the legislative process are much like weather patterns in Texas. They are cyclical. And um, we were at a place where we needed to go back as an organization with diverse partners and um, a, a network that we built up over five years and go back and use the things that we had learned, the lessons we had learned, the network we had established, uh, and build an educational framework 
um, back by which to launch water policy initiatives and by which to advance ultimately advance implementation of the Texas State Water Plan and so what we have been doing throughout the course of this interim is uh, we have launched the H2O for Texas statewide tour and um, we are honored that Chairman Keffer and Chairman Perry are serving as honorary co-chairs of that initiative. It has been a huge insulin boost in, in getting that initiative off the ground. Um, Buffy and Adam and, and the folks in, in the Senate, uh, their assistance has been instrumental organizationally and really energizing folks to take part in what we think is a very, very important educational initiative. We are, um, it is our goal throughout the course of, of this year to travel to all 16 regional water planning areas throughout the state. Um, we've been fortunate to partner with the Water Development Board in all of the areas that we've been to to date. Uh, we have also had the regional water planning group chairs participate in um, the events that we've had so far. We have been to three of the 16 regions to date. And as I said, I hope to make it to all of the 16 regions. Um, Representative Workman and Representative Burns are in a dead heat in terms of attendance today. They have both participated in, in two of the three regions. And um, again, I think this is so very important um, to stop in times of rain, especially uh, and in a time where we have made a huge investment of taxpayer dollars and implementation of our Envy of the Nation State Water Plan, pause, build that educational foundation back up, and remind Texans that we cannot afford to take our eye off the water prize. Our, um, our, our population is growing too quickly, our economy is too diverse, and our, our weather patterns are cyclical. And I know that you all have heard over and over again today, um, drought will come again. Um, but the challenge and the onus that is upon all of us right now, and it, it's so basic to those of us sitting in this room, but it is such a hard, hard message to sell. And that's that our most important work, and I'm echoing several things that Representative Larson has touched on, our most important work with respect to implementing the state water plan and getting projects on the ground to meet the water needs in the future is while it's raining. Um, but that is the hardest message to get across, and it is one of the most central messages that we are trying to take into the communities throughout the state of Texas in those 16 regional water planning areas. Um, again, thank you, Chairman Keffer, for your leadership in this initiative and, and for giving me the opportunity to talk about it today. Um, we are discussing the issues that are delineated in your charge number one. We're trying to learn about those, and we're also trying to aware, raise awareness about just about every single one of those policy issues that are identified in that charge. Um, so I, I, I will close with that and, and to say that this initiative is only going to be a success um, with your participation. And um, we want to do what is best in your respective regions of the state. And my door is open. I'm available to each and every one of you at any time uh, to work on um, exactly how we uh, implement our tour as we travel to your regions of the state. Thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions and welcome your guidance and direction. Do you feel like the uh, regions are open to new ideas, or I mean, are, we're not tunnel vision to a point where the new technology that will be coming and is coming and will be coming uh, uh, doesn't uh, resonate? I mean, I'm hopeful. I mean, you don't. I mean, how do you find it? I think that you're touching on something that's um, perhaps one of the most significant issues that we need to look at with respect to our regional water planning process and um, how the regional water plans are then folded into our state water plan. And before I go there, I first and foremost want to say the folks that are participating on those regional water planning groups uh, have done so with little thanks 
It's they volunteered their time in some cases for almost two decades um, for what I would argue is the most important civic duty anyone could do. Um, so I have tremendous respect for the work that they have done. Um, but we are in a different time. We are almost two decades down the road from 1997 when that structure was established. We now have taxpayer dollars on the line. And I would argue that um, and, and encourage all of us to step back and look at how that process is working. Um, does it need to be tweaked? Uh, do we need to standardize um, the uh, participation in those regional water planning groups? And um, yes, um, there. I think there is some resistance, and I and I understand that um, because there is a lot of time and investment that these folks are made have made into their their regional water planning groups. But I, I believe that it can be overcome through education and involvement um, by, by all of you. Um, and Representative Larson certainly led the charge on, on trying to affect that change. And so I, I think that's one of the benefits of what we're doing is trying to get those regional water planning group leaders uh, under the same roof with members of the legislature and, and members of the business community and the Water Development Board and talk about where we are today um, and what we may need to tweak in order to prove, improve on that process. If the regional water planning group process is not firing on all in cylinders and there is not complete integrity in that process, uh, the state water plan, you know, ultimately uh, is in jeopardy. And so that's, of course, as always, Mr. Chairman, a, a very long answer to a short question. But no, um, that's understandable. <laughs> yeah. of, course, of course, they're going to say, too, probably, and, and again, not taking up for them, I mean, they all great jobs that they do is finding people that even want to be on the board. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's I, a tough thing. I'm sure they have to fight every day, too. Now that there is money on the table, there is heightened interest. Um, and, and with that interest, I think we need to make sure that there's integrity in the process. Um, one thing that I didn't touch on but would ties into uh, the other things that we saw during the last legislative session is that um, and is another central message in our tour is that um, this is a statewide issue. We locally craft and draft our regional water plans, but then they come together to, for our Texas state water plan. And the dialogue that we saw sort of uh, ensue during the last legislative session would suggest that we were having a departure from managing uh, and thinking about water as a state. And so, um, that's another one of our core messages. Mr. Frank? Well, I think one of the challenges just in going to some of the regionals, the, the challenge of thinking of it as a statewide water plan is from their perspective, the only one responsible is the locals. You know, we can talk about it here, but they are the only ones responsible for providing water. It is really not the states. We have abdicated that to mm -hmm. the local groups. And so we can put them in regions or we can say you're part of a state water plan. But when push comes to shove, City A, is the only one who's responsible. This, right. the, the, the governor's not going to do it. Federal government that's turning down the permits is not going to do it. It's the city is the only one that's responsible for it. And then we get shocked that they're not going to think statewide. Right. Because we're not responsible for it. And so we got to be a little careful not to micromanage when we're not willing to step up. Uh, yeah. And provide. We're not providing the water. Right. We're right. Just, and that, so, that, that's yeah. a very a good point. And I. I, I think there can be a marriage of the two, and I've heard some interesting ideas about how to do that just in, in the committee today. My personal opinion, and the more that I work on this issue and the more that I travel the state, the more belief I have in the brilliance and the vision of the regional water planning process. Um, because Texas is a diverse state, mm -hmm. our water resources, we are blessed with an abundance of water resources, um, but they are divor diverse, Very and diverse. they are located in areas of the state in many cases where are not where our population growth is. So I, I'm a big believer in local buy-in, you know, local solutions, but then 
where I think we really need to continue to evolve is how we make that transition into thinking as a state. And I think maybe there are some things in terms of prioritization of projects that I, I heard suggested earlier today that um, doesn't usurp or, or unbundle the regional water planning process, but builds a bridge and, and starts tying that state thinking together. But it, it, won't, it will not be easy. Um, but uh, we are so blessed to live in, in this amazing state with this robust economy. Um, and what happens in the Metroplex matters in El Paso and what happens in West Texas, you know, matters in East Texas. And we've got to find a way to get there. Um, and I, I know you um, have, have stuck your toe in that water and, and it's not easy, but I certainly commend you and, and celebrate you for being willing and brave enough to have those dialogues. So what your, I mean, your organization is trying to help implement the water plan, the state water plan. So what yes. one or two things should we do? Okay. Now you've put me between a, a rock and a river. <laughs> um, our organization at this point in time is, an, is in a purely educational place. Um, we have, in order to keep our diverse partners at the same table, we have had to go back and focus purely on education. So with that disclaimer though, I will tell you what we have looked at in the past. But when I make it abundantly clear, I'm not taking a position on any of these issues, um, and nor is H2O for Texas. But what we have looked at um, in the past and discussed during the interim preceding the 84th legislature um, was the movement of water around the state, um, the governance of regional water planning groups that, that we've already discussed today, um, the surface water rights permitting process, which I know you all have, I thought you had a great discussion about earlier today, um, and uh, the interaction building that bridge between uh, regional water planning groups' interests and other regional water planning groups and how we come together as a state. So how is that for guarded? Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, the good news is, and this is not what we saw during the legislative process, but the good news is all of those issues are being discussed by this committee, by your committee of jurisdiction in the Senate. Um, everything that we have seen as important, y'all are tackling head on. And I feel like there was a real aggressive reboot after um, the 84th legislature to, to sort of go, okay, yeah, our work isn't done. Um, and we cannot afford to put water on the, on the shelf in the state of Texas. True. Any other questions, comments, or anything? Well, thank you very much, Heather. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Chairman.